Hello, everyone, and thank you for again joining us uh, for the Aperio Micro Conference. Um, my name is Patrick Masson. I'm the executive director of the Aperio Foundation, and uh, I wanted to uh, thank you for coming. And just as a reminder, uh, the Aperio Micro Conferences are monthly events that we run uh, to uh, learn more about and share information among open source communities uh, and higher education, educational technology. Uh, these events started uh, about uh, well, just over a year now, last uh, January. And uh, when the Aperio Board of Directors uh, got together to start looking to the future and uh, reached out to the community to find folks who could help uh, assess the current landscape of open source and um, education technology and higher education. And it was so popular that we had uh, lots of folks asking if they could participate um, live like we're doing now and record them. So it's grown quite a bit. And um, uh, I thank you all and I thank our speakers today uh, and in the past for uh, making this such a successful event. I think um, most folks probably anecdotally appreciate that uh, open source software is growing more and more in their institutions. But I think one of the key factors driving that is the recognition of open source's value within uh, government agencies and research institutions. And there's a growing number of, of in the US agencies that are requiring open uh, source as part of the outputs of, of, of funded research. So. For a lot of institutions, they're now struggling with how do we go from an org, uh, a project that was funded by a grant and supported by our institution to an independent, sustainable project. So the NIH, the Department of Education, and so on are now providing grants around just that. For some reason, my cool pictures aren't showing up on the left. I don't know if people can see the, the slides. But um, the NSF, the National Science Foundation, has invested $8 million this year in uh, grants. They have a grant program called the Pathways to Open Source Ecosystems. And uh, $8 million have been given to uh, probably 40 uh, institutions that uh, are developing open source software. And the goal there is, is how do we fund not only the research and the projects, but how do we turn these projects into sustainable communities of practice so that the research lives on after the granting um, is over? Um, the same thing uh, has happened with the uh, Sloan Foundation. The Sloan Foundation has given out uh, about $6 million plus to 12, 13, 14 institutions to create open source program offices dedicated specifically to supporting research on campuses. Um, in the EU, the uh, uh, Horizon Europe is a program that's um, focused on open source development um, well, a lot of research projects, but open source development, open source software, technology, uh, open science and open science policy, open access published, all sorts of open initiatives are now part of these uh, research programs, expectations uh, by the funders that the outputs will be open. Um, and I quickly did a scroll. Now, not all this money is probably directly for open source research or open source software as part of research, but it highlights the investment that Europe as well is making. So the open source uh, role within uh, higher education and research is growing. And how do we transition these projects that started off as uh, grant funded programs um, hosted within institutions how do we help them evolve? Uh, how do we help them integrate with you know, other business and, and, and other universities and build consortia and communities of practice? So on that note, we invited, uh, let's see here, um, the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, they've been working for 10 years uh, plus, I think, uh, to help exactly that happen. Research that's occurring across Europe um, and coming out of whether it's corporations or universities and helping turn those research activities into viable and sustainable open source projects. Um, and so we invited Philippe Kreef, uh, who's the Director of Research Relations at Eclipse Foundation, um, to speak a little bit about the success that Aperio has had. Um, he himself has been involved, I think, from day one uh, at Eclipse in uh, the research efforts. And there's 
I don't know, dozens of projects that have gone through this development pathway uh, led by Eclipse and Philippe. So we're really excited to, to hear a little bit about how Eclipse is doing it, take some lessons learned, and hopefully we can take those best practices and apply them to our own projects, apply them to Aperio. Um, so thank you again, Philippe, for being here. And I will turn it over to you. Thank you. So yes, thanks a lot for inviting us. Uh, yeah, inviting me uh, more particularly to talk about uh, these 10 years of commitment. Uh, actually, it's very interesting for us to, to step back for a sec and say, okay, what we, did we achieve? How we did it? And uh, and what kind of lesson we learn? Even for ourselves, it's it's helpful. So it's we're not already at the level of rules, but some good practices that we identified several times and we could apply several cases and it worked pretty well. So it's all about that during this presentation. So first, I wanted to start with a few numbers about the Eclipse Foundation. Most of you know us, but it's important that usually when we speak about Eclipse, people remember the IDE. Uh, it's a platform that uh, uh, IBM uh, delivered in 2001 for, for the open source communities, and, and then in 2004 decided to create a foundation around this IDE because I will say that we are, they were tired that people were naming it the IDE of IBM when actually it was already culturally open source and managed by several organizations. So. Today, uh, after this uh, 20 years, because this year it's our 20th anniversary, uh, we have we are a foundation with more than 350 uh, organization members, uh, almost 2,000 committers. Committers at Eclipse are people who are allowed to push the code in repositories. The others who want to contribute are just contributors, and they submit a pull request, which has to be accepted by the committers. And we manage uh, around 400 pro different projects, uh, Eclipse projects. I'm not talking about research projects. It's another part of Eclipse. And today, the team is pretty big in, in, in Europe and in, uh, in, in America. And so in total, we are 65 people, 30 in Europe. And we are growing in Europe. We are growing pretty quickly because when I started years ago at Eclipse Foundation, we were only five. Uh, and so today, we are, we are much more. Uh, and uh, because of that, and because of these numbers that you see on the top, uh, our board, so our strategic members, decided in 2020 to move the foundation from North America to Europe, because we saw a s sort of strength coming from, from Europe. And uh, definitely it was confirmed, and, it, and we, we work in this direction. So all the work we did uh, ahead of time also on research project was very helpful to, to do these, mo these moves smoothly. Uh, Eclipse, sometimes people hide us thinking that we will, we are developers. Actually, our members are definitely developers, but ourselves, we are mainly uh, managing communities. Uh, because initially, because of Eclipse platform itself and this notion of plugins, you could customize, extend the platform. We start pulling new communities around modeling, around science, uh, and so on. And finally, in 2009, uh, we start to be agnostic and not only uh, be concentrated to, 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 to the Java language, and then we start pulling in other communities. All these communities like the idea of, of our uh, Eclipse public license, the fact that it's a weak copyleft license where not only you can do whatever you want with, with, your, with uh, the code, but if you find an improvement that you should give it back to the community. So this aspect of we are sharing things. We are here to work together, not only to consume some open source code. Um, it's one aspect. And the other aspect is uh, the governance, uh, governance of, of, of the project and how, uh, how, how we manage this project. So we have lots of organizations who follow us on this, on this move. And so we see, of course, for historical reasons, Java, uh, Java work going on. We see on IoT since 2001, and we have certainly one of the most active IoT community in open source. And more recently, in automotive as well. So lots of uh, uh, organization, European uh, uh, organization, mainly, but uh, not only, uh, who, who want to be involved in this uh, big move of, of sharing, uh, sharing work together, sharing, sharing a platform together to define a common understanding of, of that domain. And then on top of this common understanding and open source understanding, you build your own solution where you can really compete uh, with your, with your co co competitors. 
and several uh, topics such cloud of course we have also some some stuff around privacy uh, privacy engineering data spaces so now let's talk about research more specifically in in this picture and why first why we have been invited so it actually it happened uh, the first invitation we received was in 2013 and uh, some of our members came to us and say hey guys now the european commission is pushing us to go open source and we thought that we are doing open source with you for 10 years so we know how to deal with open source so we pushed our code three months before the end of the project and we were waiting for and now after six months after the end of the project six months after the end of the project sorry nothing happened so what are you doing to create these synergies the activity around the code around these communities so first point we mentioned that, hey guys maybe you should not start talking publicly about your project and about your code and share your code publicly three, uh, three months before the end but as soon as possible so it was the first aspect after that in terms of also to who are you talking to you when you we see your documentation around your project you are either talking to your peers researchers or to your end users fair enough but what about developers the developers will be part of your community an active part of your community not your peers because they have their own labs to to manage or your end users which are here mainly to use your stuff and more to to extend it or to improve it so it's a different speech different way to talk so after this kind of exchange they say okay we would like to invite you to our uh, next project and to help us from the beginning in building a community around that and we accepted this invitation of course because we wanted to support our members initially it was coming from our members but also of course we wanted to gain new members because we when you see that you have over a, a new consortium you have you start with a 10 at least 10 different uh, partner we can expect that we can gain maybe one or two more uh, members by the end of the project we, will, it, we also wanted to retain some, some of our members because some of them realize that what Eclipse can really bring. Sometimes they just don't realize because we, we are behind the scene, we are on the backstage, so they don't realize all the work done by an IP team, uh, by the uh, governance and, and uh, the licenses that we put in place and so on. So all these aspects also for them was very important and, and they could understand that we could retain some members like that. Of course, and it's what certainly is the best part of my job is gain new technologies. We learn so much things when we just read proposals and how people can apply these new technologies uh, in, in, uh, with some great ideas and so on. So for us, it's a great to, to pull this new technology. And of course, because there are calls coming from European Commission, they are on the main uh, trends of, of what we see these days. So usually we are pretty in sync with what's going on in, in Eclipse in, in other um, working group or group of, 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 uh, of projects. Of course, we also want to, to push our own technology to improve it, to be challenged by this uh, research project. So when we have the opportunity during the uh, proposal phase or during the project itself, we mention this or that project. We even invite project leaders of Eclipse uh, to, to present their project to see if it can answer to the needs of the project like that, instead of reinvent the wheel, the guy can really invent the car. And last but not least, uh, which was also an important point that our board asked us to do, it's to diversify our revenue, knowing that most of the revenue of, of, of our foundation comes from the membership. Uh, here's the current portfolio. So you, you see uh, in, in green uh, all the projects which are really sustainable, which means sustainable that they are over. But nevertheless, after the end of the project, you are still people developing code on, on, on top of the open source code uh, delivered by this project. We have two guys in red. Unfortunately, uh, they, this guy will be, will be archived in the next, uh, next few months just because they could not sustain. It could be maybe part of our problems uh, because we, it was pretty early stage of our involvement in research project. But mainly we identified the, the problem that on one of them, we had three different coordinators. So it created a big mess inside the project, unfortunately. And the second one, it was also some different people were pushing uh, to go open source. Some were not pushing to go open source. So it took us more time trying to find a good arrangement uh, and, and to, to make it happen. 
Uh, in white, you see all the projects who are running currently in, in the team. And in blue, uh, the four new projects that we, we, we start uh, between uh, December and now. And actually, today, I'm in Thessaloniki between two kickoff meetings, one with uh, Inact and another one with Skylab, which are also two very interesting projects we, we are working on. So in terms of lesson learned of all, through all these projects, what we learned? First, we learn about the consortium. Uh, the consortium, it, we, we have three kinds of profiles. In, we identify, let's say, three main kinds of profiles in the consortium. We, we have industries which are coming with requirements, usually expressed uh, through uh, use case or so pilot projects or proof of concept. We have researchers who are coming with innovative ideas and they want to develop a prototype to demonstrate that their idea can really answer to the requirements. And it's very important that it's prototypes. And, and, and we try to explain people yet yeah, that researcher, if they want to build a final product, they switch to the next role, which will be software vendor. But usually a researcher, he, he try to make a proof of concept. It's for him the most important aspect. And then, yes, you have the software vendor. We are here to have this technology transfer from researchers and to industrialize the sol solution and to build a final product or deliver and or deliver an expertise to the industries. But in this schema, uh, if one of these players decide to leave the project, we get in trouble. Industry can decide, OK, guys, it was my ID. Now, finally, we decide to go on another market. So forget about my ID, but you cannot choose it. Researchers can run after other funding as well. And it's fair enough. They have to, to, to make a life their lab. And, and then they can take their, their prototypes. And uh, um, software vendors are maybe the same kind of situation. They have, can be bought by a bigger group. And the group say, OK, this piece of code is ours, so we'll take it back so you cannot reuse it. And you, you, you are blocked, and the project cannot move and follow up. For this reason, that open source is here to unlock this kind of situation. So we are considered as a catalyst which help unlock. So you can, if you put the code in open source, automatically all these players, you can change the industry. You can Im invite another one at the same time or separately. You can switch from one university or invite other university, and, and same with software vendors. So we get this kind of freedom to follow up on our project and to sustain, because some projects, they reach only the TRL 4 or 5 level, and you might want to have a follow-up project and reach the stable uh, 6 or 7 to be uh, closer to a sustain sustainable solution. I Here, I wanted to show you, maybe uh, based on, on the country where you come from, you might not aware that uh, in Europe, we have a different kind of timeline. So the timeline is pretty uh, special because we start uh, proposal writings six months or even uh, one year uh, ahead. And uh, so this, during this proposal phase, we really try to uh, um, collaborate with the consortium and to be involved as soon as possible because we want to be able to validate with them if they really want to do open source it, or is it's only when the check they want to do on their, on their proposal. So for us, it's very important to identify motivated consortium versus people who just invite us, us to, to, to gain some chance to win. Uh, after that, after this first phase, we have six, six more months where we have to wait for a selection. So there is a review and, and depending on the calls uh, or the topics, if it's very narrow or very wide, we can have, they can receive hundreds of, of proposals. And so if we have to cross our fingers, we expect to be selected. And, uh, and last not least, once we are selected, if we have a chance to be selected, we also try to uh, push open source again during what we name it the consortium agreement. Because on the consortium agreement, you have to define what you mean by open source in terms of license, in terms of uh, right, and, and, and so on. So it's a good way to also be sure that all the partners are willing to go in this direction. Because if you don't specify that at this level, at any time during the rest of the project, you can have a partner will raise the hand and say, sorry, guys, I didn't want to go open source. So it will, it will push back and, and you will not be able to achieve your, your final goal, which is deliver an open source solution. And now I would like to dig a little bit more in this uh, three years of a research project, how it works. First year, something also that we discovered uh, at the beginning, 
I was involved in with IBM. I used to work with IBM and even work on an early version of Eclipse. Uh, so I was really uh, swimming in open source for quite lots of years. So for me, it was obvious uh, that uh, open source was a great solution for for industries. And I realized that lots of people have sort of cliche about open source. And one of those is the offer open source is for EPs. So it's completely unrealistic world. And so we have to explain, we have to explain how, the, how governance work, how we, we manage IPs, how we, we, uh, we also can manage patents and, and so on. And uh, we understand uh, the, the, the full process. So people need to understand how everything works properly. We also have to explain them, yes, IP license, copyright, how it works, because when you see the, the people who are both able to share the code without any header with the, who owns the code, it's, uh, it's usually a, a big problem. And I like to tell this story with about a professor of a university in, in Austria. Uh, he, 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 they were building a solver for one of our projects, and he, he was not in a hurry to open source his code. So he will see when we'll decide to do it and so on. Okay, and at mo and one moment in one dinner, we had a social dinner that we have during some plenary meetings. He was mentioning that uh, he's planning to move to the University of Zurich. And so I asked him, great, so are you planning to to continue to use your solver? Are you planning to continue to work with your PhD student in, in Austria and also to have some of your students in, in Switzerland to work with you on your solver? And say, yes, of course. He says, then you should maybe talk with your legal department first to be sure that you can do it. And he discovered that he doesn't own the code. The university owns the code. And, and, and we realized that also with uh, uh, some uh, um, also research when you have some you invite some master or students to participate to your to the code and they didn't sign any contributor agreement so at any time one of these master students can come back to you and say hey guys you didn't pay for for this job i did it during my studies and i own this code which is true you unless he's a, he works for 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 you or work for the university uh he you he owns his code unless he signs a, a contributor agreement with you so all these aspects of license and copyright is important is important and the last not least, of course, you have software vendors who are here and are very scared about losing their, their capability to make, to make business, to make money. And we cannot ignore that. And it's very important because they are the guy who will be able to pull the project outside to do the exploitation part of the project. And uh, so we need to explain them, yes, you can make money with, a, with a, an open source project. And here are different type of business models based on, on open source. Not, it's not open source who drives the business model. It's you who have, you deploy your business model based on open source. And, and we explain all that in details. And even sometimes we invite some of our members to present how they, they, they deal with their totally 100% open source solution, for example. The second year, it's when actually we start uh, collecting more and more uh, code from everybody. And uh, this kind of project, we have, uh, we can have between 10 to uh, our high score is 81 partners. So imagine you have 81 people coming with their own way of developing code, putting copyrights, licenses, uh, development process, and so on. And you have to make them work together for the next couple of years. So of course, we need to set up an open environment for them where they will collaborate and of course when you speak about open they are very nervous nobody wants to share his code say oh my gosh I, my code is not ready i don't want to share it now i don't want to let others see how bad i am in writing comments or, or maybe my api is not stable and so on so we try to reassure them saying you guys you are in the middle of github and github today it's more than 400 millions of repositories so who will care about your small repository on, on, on the side. So it's not big deal until you start communicating at large, you are on the safe side, but at least you learn working together, working under the same, same vision, same organization, and, and you don't try to, to, um, to integrate everything just two weeks before the review, but you can start integrating things as soon as possible. And it's what we used to say in Eclipse uh, way, uh, development, you drive with open eyes, right? With continuous integration and continuous testing. So it's really some best practices. After, so we normalize this kind of uh, uh, open open development. And also, it's a good way when we, we decide to go through an open infrastructure to identify really which piece of code will be definitely open and which, which one will not. 
and which one they hesitate. So at least you know already as soon as possible that uh, you can maybe put, put uh, the rest of the project in trouble if, for example, your component, which is in the, in the core, in the root of, of your platform, core, uh, ar core architecture, sorry, that uh, this component will not be open source, then actually we might be in trouble. So it's, you, we need to find solutions. Usually in this kind of situation, we recommend to the partner, either if they really consider that his added value is in this core component, then we ask him to deliver as well um, a reference implementation of this core component with only the APIs and very simple behavior, not very smart behavior, but at least we can deliver a full solution in open source. And then after that, if he wants to sell, he can say, okay, guys, I can replace this stupid component by a smart one and and you will have something fully operational but at least we can download and we can test the platform so all this work that has to be done we with a team and uh, and we start also communicating about that and uh, involving other people that they can watch what's going on they can see the progress or of course there is a website there is all this communication around all the social media which help us showing that uh, that uh, the project is growing and 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 and, and making progress the last year, it's very sensitive year because uh, we need to um, secure our early adopters. Our early adopters is a consortium, are the developer of the consortium. So if these guys don't want to follow up on the project, are not excited by what they achieved, then forget it. it nothing will happen because nobody will take care of that if you, you don't have some guys who are able to own and to uh, carry the, the project a few more months or a few more years after the end of the project. So it's one, one thing. The other aspect is uh, the lack of time. Uh, if we start pushing the code too late, then you reach a situation with Eclipse where we have an Eclipse process, an IP review process, which can put you in trouble because uh, we, you can identify some problem with, I mentioned the copyright headers, but it's, I will say it's a simple case. But for example, a dependency with a library which is not, which has a license which is not compatible with the license that you use. Typically, you have a dependency you decide to go to go for for an Eclipse Week license, and one of your library is under the GPL license, and um, and it, it it will not work in this case because you need to in this case if you use you are dependent on the GPL license, uh, your own code has to be under the GPL license. So we have all this work to do, and sometimes even you have licenses where not open source licenses, even if it's written like that, but you don't have. For your, for your information, one of the last projects we, we went through, we had something like 1,800 of dependencies that a project was using. So it's, if we start doing this parsing uh, just a few weeks or a few months before the end of the project, we will never reach a solution on time. So we could do it sooner because we had this common platform where we could store the code. And while the project was still developing, we, Eclipse, could start parsing the code, identify potential issue, and, and say, guys, this library will not work. So either you talk to the owner of the library and ask him to change for another license, or it, and, and we did several times and it worked, or you, you have to find another component which does almost the same thing and then the impact is not too big because it's, you are soon enough in the project or you you have to rewrite a full component and in this case okay you have to assign more more resources on this job and and you don't have a bad surprise because it's again soon enough to do all this work we have several strengths and uh, and i'm first of all i'm very proud of of the team working with me because all the projects i've mentioned we are man managed by these four people, including me. I'm part of this team and I work full time with them. So I'm going to these meetings and also going through all this analysis. But we're not alone, of course. We have all the rest of the uh, Eclipse uh, teams who are helping us. We have the marketing team, which helps us in communication. And I will mention the different uh, strengths we have through, through our, with our community through the marketing team. We have the working groups, as I mentioned before, with these different domains, uh, Java, Automotive, and so on. So we have, on each of these working group, we have a program manager which can help us reaching this ecosystem. If like that, to, we can leverage this ecosystem to promote our own research projects. So they don't start from scratch with no nobody. They can go to some events. They can talk about our events. And, and the Eclipse community is very friendly and welcoming. So. You, you, they will ask you questions and they interact. So it, it makes it sh 
it shows to the uh, research project that yeah the open source community are are, are welcoming are will be happy to have you on board so it also help developers to continue their work of course we have the ip team we cannot live with that we are these guys so they will help us when we are facing some lessons that we are not aware or some specific case where we have a customer or a partner which is a want to share part not the other part and so on so they help us figure it out they help also with the trademark on, on the name of the project and we have of course the emos the eclipse management team which is here to help us in the, in the governance if we face any and governance issue in during the project so and of course after the team with our community is very strong community we have a newsletter that monthly newsletter and and we have uh, more than 150,000 of subscribers on this new letter. We co-organize more than one and organize or co-organize more than 100 events worldwide. So it's also very interesting for our projects to, even if they cannot come, say, hey guys, would you mind to, to put our flyers on, on your booth and, and, and pitch about the project? And usually we can go and, and pitch, of course. Uh, we have uh, these working groups, as I mentioned before. We, of course, write white paper on, this, on, on key topics. And we invite research project to participate to the white paper if they want. We have press releases and uh, with our millions of, of connections, of course, it's very interesting. And we have an annual event. Uh, it used to be named EclipseCon, but uh, starting this year, it will name it OCX for Open Code Experience. And uh, uh, where we will have uh, actually co-located events on for our co-located uh, co organ um, our different uh, communities and like that people will be able to go to these different events and and join during the break to 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 meet each other and the last not least is this infrastructure i was mentioning so it's really this infrastructure came after a couple of years because we realized that yes going through directly to eclipse was not was was showstopper for a lot of our projects because they realized that they have so many things to verify such uh, committer paperwork with their organization, such uh, all the IP issues they could face and so on. It was taking so much time and, and they were not ready on time to, to achieve by the end of the project. So we created this intermediate infrastructure, or I will name it SAS, between uh, the initial code and, and the Eclipse project, where you already can identify your, your open source component, as I mentioned before, and which, which piece will not be open sourced. Fair enough, so you put them here. In, in your research in the research lab and when you push them to be able to push them you need to sign the contributor agreement for us it's very important so by signing on contributor agreement you, it means that you agree that it's your own code you agree that you are it's you agree to open source your code that you didn't take the code from somebody else you don't know and you decide to push it for him so he agreed to push the code as well so all this kind of paperwork which will protect the project for being after that buzzer by by some some people who could decide to sue them uh, after the end of the project uh, the duration of the research project and of course in parallel we'll do all this copyright either uh, parsing and the uh, library uh, licenses analysis to to verify any problem of compatibility and then when we reach the the end of the project uh, six months uh, before the end we can very smoothly push the code, all the code, if we consider that all the code is reach a level of maturity uh, that and all the partners want to really create a full Eclipse project from this research project. Or sometimes we have some uh, project where the, the, not the motivation of all the partners is not here and it's not necessary to push and to bother everybody with all this process. So in this case, we only concentrate our support to the to the mature components who are really want to go to the next level. So we name it them the golden nuggets and we push them to, to deliver their, their code in an Eclipse project and, and to continue the project afterward. So uh, to conclude, uh, usually what our work in, in this kind of research project, yes, there is this uh, execution work, of course, we are, we are, we are granted for, for doing that, but uh, it's really to seed see the message about open source and uh, and it's a way of for us also to see our own research community so seed we by seed uh, and we use this, this this acronym for sharing embracing engage and develop share yes you have to share first and as soon as possible and you don't only share code but you share 
all your issues, you share all your planning, all your concern, and all the solutions that you, you made, and all the documentation you can share, you do it. Uh, videos and tutoring and, and, and so on. And then after that, you visit others. You don't stay in your own world, but you embrace other communities and developer communities, and don't forget developer communities, which are a big part of, of the win. And after that, of course, you need to engage these guys. So you need to organize events where you have hackathons, contests, and we have a great example of some uh, uh, contests we organize. We have a big project about, uh, um, and name it, uh, the research project was named Abstaco. And this project was consisting in developing application on your own development environment, pushing in the cloud, and then after that, deploy in cars. And the two use cases they had was one with an Audi car and the other one in a bus. And we say, guys, you cannot bring a bus to any conference event and even less to a developer event. So let's try to find a case where we could have a cool, cool uh, story to tell to uh, some developers. And actually, we found a way to, to deploy the solution in a, in a, on a rover with a Raspberry Pi. So we had this full getting started document where people could uh, buy the correct rover, buy the correct sensors, uh, and have a discount from the provider, by the way, and then uh, get it back. And after that, to be able to sold everything, set up everything. And it's a pr project is named Cooksa, it's still very strong and alive. And we could initiate this kind of activity. And we had plenty of students working and, and doing contests with Bosch and Ericsson on, on this topic. And, uh, uh, and actually, it's still, still true today. And, uh, and two years later, at the end, after the end of the project, the project was still alive. And we had a Mercedes and a, a couple of other OEMs who say, wow, uh, it's exactly what we want to do. We, we need to have a, a platform which will be able to cover all the problematic from the design to the development, to the test, and to the deployment. And so they start with, with Cooksa because Cooksa was already taking care of security aspects, some security aspect of that. And it was a the, the jump start for the SDV working group, which is so, uh, software defined vehicle working group that we have at Eclipse, which is very active now for two years. And, and, uh, and by the way, they had all these students or young, young engineers who had already this practice around this open source technology who they could hire, which was also a great, great solution for them. Other aspect as well, strong aspect that we realized uh, initially, I was invited all these researchers to come to EclipseCon, our ev event, and they will not come. And they will not come because they could not pay for the trip because they didn't have to, to be able to travel for any conference. They had to, uh, uh, to have a paper submitted and accepted. So we, we launched this uh, scientific conference where we organize and every year we change the topic. So the first year it was about the IoT after the mo mobility. The last year it was a cloud to edge continuum. And this year it will be about databases. Uh, so we launched this scientific event where uh, people submit a, a paper. We have a technical program committee which will review it and, uh, and our expert and professors of different universities. And now since last year, we are we're considered as an SCM uh, event and uh, support, uh, yes, yeah, so sponsored by ACM. And so uh, now they can come and, and meet our Eclipse community. It's a, it's a sort of trick to, to kill two birds in one stone. You have a paper, you, and of course, we help our research project to submit some papers, because usually the topics is related to the uh, project we're working on. And also, they give them a chance to meet Eclipse, uh, Eclipse community and open source, more generally, open source community. And the last uh, uh, last point that also with all the material that we created during this uh, research project to try to explain uh, researchers the value of open source, we were able to build a couple of lectures, one more targeting master and PhD students, uh, where we have so some basics about uh, and key, key aspect of, of, of open source. And then the last part is about open source and business, when we explain them uh, the different business models and actually we're an exercise of two hours with uh, the duration of this lecture is four hours, two hours of, of talks and exchange and two hours of exercise where they have to analyze uh, different existing uh, open source organizations to understand how it works and, uh, and then after that to debrief with the rest of, of the group. And we have a two hours presentation more for researchers and PhDs where we go through the same topic at the beginning 
and at the end we talk more about uh, license uh, open source uh, uh, open source and patents which is very important in research and ospo and and uh, the ospo plus plus initiative that you certainly some of you know already so it's important and we try to do it uh, uh, four four times a year to different university where we, when we travel to any plenary meeting and the last message not least if they get this message at the end that uh, open source is a journey and not a destination uh, it, it it answered to all our uh, hope and uh, and 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 then i think they understand the message and and they understand that open source is a, it's a commitment it's not you don't abandon your code you commit to the rest of the world to maintain this code and to build a community around this code to to make it sustainable and exploitable afterward after the end of the research project that's it thank you thank you philippe uh lots of stuff i was getting some back channel questions and uh uh, but let me uh, let me open up the forum here uh, to folks who maybe want to ask a question. I do have a couple that came in already. Um, and while I ask those, maybe folks want to add others to the chat there and then um, we can respond. Um, one of the questions that came in is, is how does Eclipse, you mentioned in one of the slides, 81, uh, 81 uh, partners or group uh, pe people or organizations came together. How does Eclipse either find participants or do participants find Eclipse? What's the sort of awareness and onboarding process so that does Eclipse find projects that are already out there? Do they find initiatives that are happening, IoT, and then they look for them? How's that work? How do you how do you find the starting okay. point? In, initially, uh, initially, so, so our members found us initially, and see for this reason that we had to create this uh, legal entity in, in in Germany to be able to participate to European projects, and initially, yes, to to jumpstart, we in our different pitches presentation, we will go some events organized by European Commission to say, hey guys, by the way, we do open source and we can help. Today, we say nothing because we we are invited too many times. Uh, just, just for we have a run uh, a deadline for the 19th of March, and we are already been invited to, to 28 different proposals, and we didn't say anything. And most of these proposals are coming from people we worked with before, so it's uh, it's also for us a sign that yeah, people like how we 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 deal with with uh, their their work and how we we interact with them. And of course, there are always new new members, new partners in this project, so. We can uh, explain them also what what's going on and how we work. So it, it mainly is like that. Of course, we check the the propo uh, which has a calls every year that uh, the European Commission is proposing. And uh, but uh, it, I I did one year. I tried to say yes, we are interested in this call and this call and this call. And finally, we have been invited by so many guys who have no clue about what is a research project, what is a European research project, but they are looking for partners to set up a consortium that it was a big, uh, big mess and not really very uh, efficient. Now we just let people invite us and, and we start to have a, a reputation and even inside the European Commission, because now we are part of their slide. So when they mention open source, they, they mention us and they mention the Linux Foundation, they mention all over you too. So the three main foundation that we, we, we have in, in Europe these days. So it sounds like your growth and success is leading to more growth and success. So. Uh, <laughs> it's a nice place yes. to be. Um, I, another one of the slides had uh, uh, the green uh, projects, and you mentioned a, a couple there that were red. Is that sustainability or, or capacity, um, the, the state of those? Are, do you measure those through some sort of health metrics? How do you uh, ascertain the, the, the status of a project, and, and what do you use to assess its, its current state and where it might need help and where it's okay? Ah, uh, by when the project is is finished uh, for us, we I mean that uh, on this project usually uh, we ask six months or nine months before the end say who will stay and be continue to be involved in the project, and the first guy who raised his hand is us, right? Because we we the code is will is stay it will be at Eclipse, so we will host it, we will maintain it, we'll back it up. Uh, if they want to have a, an article submitted to any of our, our social media, we will do it. 
uh, if they want to participate to any, any of our conference, they are more than welcome. So we can continue to do our homework with, with them. Uh, for us, so it's what is important to see if others are still willing to do that. And uh, and we and usually we see just because the projects we see commits going on after the end of the project, and we see uh, new releases coming on, new members joining the the project, new contributor joining the project. Is how we are, we see that we are successful uh, versus when we see that the it's a, the, the, the the commit uh, is completely flat on, on GitHub or in GitLab. We know that uh, the project's just dying. So, of course, we can ask what's going on with coordinator, but the coordinator cannot do anything, you know, in the research projects. Once the project is over, the coordinator has no power to, to pull, pull the guys back and say, hey, guys, you committed to continue, and if they don't want to continue. So all the job has to be done. We have only three years to convince these guys that it's worth it, and uh, and to create this relationship so one aspect of that is i'm free to invite people to drink beers uh, when i've been hired by eclipse uh, uh the guy who hired me uh gail Blundell, told me uh, do you drink beers and i say once in a while so he said you should train yourself and it's true you have you have to to organize after the plenary meeting yesterday uh, uh yeah, monday actually uh uh, we, we had a dinner and, and people were going to buy their hotels. So I said, no, no, let's go and let's a beer and chat together and create this relationship. If you don't create the, the desire of people to continue to work together, you, you, you miss a part of the community, of course. And, and the okay. sustainability is affected. Uh, thanks. We had a question come in. Um, so does Eclipse um, use the same process across the board? So. Um, is your is your development incubation accelerator activities are those the same despite the either category of project or the community or the the consortium are, is it always the same process or does it differ based on perhaps the project or the organizations involved yes when when we have uh when we have some um, some of our in some partners are really strong player in eclipse so they have a strong experience in, in, in open source development. We, we don't drive. We don't, we are just here to, to support. We are just on the backstage to support them. When most of the guys are really new and they are, as I said, scared or nervous about that, then we are much more proactive and trying to push things. Uh, so we have some projects uh, where they, they start from the day one. They, the day one, they create the Eclipse, Eclipse project, not the research project, but the Eclipse project. So from day one, they start to push and respect IP review and so on. We had that in a couple of projects, but it was driven by two key players that we have, are, which are Bosch and Ericsson. But most ma majority of them uh, that uh, we, we have to go through this intermediate state with uh, this intermediate level. And it, it yeah, reinsure everybody. So like that, people don't feel nervous that they have to give back everything. They say, okay, if you, at the end of the project, you want to stay at the research labs, you stay at the research lab and only the guys who would like to go further, you will be able to go further. But at least we are clear with the European Commission. The European Commission knows that, okay, the code is open source, is op op openly available at the research level, fair enough. But uh, you, you uh, only so those who want to, follow up will 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 follow up i i guess so, the next question I, it sort of builds on that um aperio has some projects that start back in the 90s you know the late 1990s and even 2000 so we've got 20 year pro and i noticed there's a three-year sort of time box that you were working uh, in sort of the development process how does e eclipse work with those projects you know as maybe the grant dollars aren't coming anymore or maybe the research is researchers have moved on or maybe what what's in place for long-term sustainability so that those projects have they reached a, a tipping point where they're just so they're used all over and folks they, they just have their own inertia that's moving them along uh, what's the long-term engagement uh with uh eclipse okay we have a um a team we name it's uh, personal services where we we can help this kind of project, actually, I, I'm involved with the CNRS, which is a French French research organization, uh, and uh, these folks have uh, a program named Open, and this program will select, I think, as really four months or, or six months, select uh, uh, six 
project who want to go open source or which are already open source but they don't really know how to to proceed how to build a community or and so they need a, a little bit of money to uh, maybe uh, hire a uh, engineer to to upgrade their code to maintain their code and so on and we uh, we participate to these actions with our services to uh, to um, to support these uh, these initiatives and uh, for this, this project, we are totally outside of the research program, right? And some of them are pretty old, but I, I, I participate to the selection of these six projects where I could, we could mention that these guys are not mature enough for, for going on this way. Some others are made some choices. Maybe they should reconsider some of their choices before going, we could work with them and so on. And we, uh, but after that, we we provide the level of services we can provide at Eclipse. So it's uh, as soon as they they will like to to push that code in Eclipse, they will all the machinery of Eclipse will start. So the IP review, but they will not be tied to these three years, right? So uh, if it takes maybe a full year to go through the IP review, fair enough. It's like a, a new organization coming to Eclipse. Say, okay, guys, I want to open source my code. Here is it. So I will go through it and we'll identify all these issues and uh, we'll check the trademark aspects and so on. So everything is it's a classical process that we have in Eclipse. And at this time, the main difference is that we know that with research, we need they need support because they have so many other things to do and uh, that uh, that we need they need to have this kind of level of support and understanding of uh, of the complexity sometime of, of some of our work. Uh, so it's for this reason that we consider them a little bit differently than an uh, organization where usually they have a process well done and they bring some code which is always pretty mature. They say, okay, now we want to go open source and we have some our version N which is really stable and we want to give it to you. Thank you. Um, and then we have some, the uh, lectures, are those available um, publicly? The, the two yeah, are, yeah, I, I can share it with you. There are, we have um, we have our slides are on, under the uh, Eclipse public license, so I can share with you. It's only the slides. We never record them, uh, maybe because of the duration, uh, but uh, certainly we can we can share them. And and uh, if you wish, we even can come and and, and give the lecture. We will not <laughs> do uh, every time, but uh, we can find a way to to give the lecture. It's uh, and uh, for our charge including, we don't. Uh, uh, the, we, yeah, we we came for we came for free. It's on part of our job to to do that. So okay, you, so I, and even, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, and I, yeah, I wanted to say yes, it's it, it's best when the, the location is where we have a, a meeting like that. We arrive a day before and we stay one more day to to do to give the lecture. But uh, if it's not the case, we always can find an arrangement to come and visit you guys because okay. our our job is really to to push open source in research and and in front of students and researchers so if we if you can help us achieving our goals we are more than happy to help okay so for our folks online um when we share the video we'll also include the link and con uh, to the lecture material um so that you can review it but also we'll uh throw philippe's email in there too so you can reach out for a um a lecture if you need somebody um yourself uh, Philippe, thank you so much for uh, taking the time uh, to share this. Uh, it, it's a—I must say—it's a nice place. Must be a nice place to be. Um, that uh, Eclipse has has sort of reached the point where um, its reputation and its work has earned it the uh, respect of the EU and the research and university community. Uh, recognized as as experts in their field, where they're coming to you and and uh, looking for your support and valuing the the work that you're doing so um you know as a much smaller organization it's a great uh, sort of reference model for us to look at and see how we can help our community um, i love the seed the 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 uh, seed acronym that you had there that's a that's a great concept i think it embodies things so thank you so much for your time and um like i said uh, we'll put this uh video um on our youtube channel we'll also share the link with everyone who attended, um, along with the other resources that we mentioned. And from uh, the Aperio Foundation, thank you everyone who uh, came out today. Um, please, uh, if you enjoyed this, um, 
let your colleagues uh, either in your projects or on your campuses let let them know that we do these once a month. Uh, we'd love to grow the community so we can get more folks like uh, Philippe and Eclipse to join us. So uh, I'll, with that, I'll say thank you and uh, I'll let thank you uh, so much. All right, thanks, Philippe. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.